So with the Madrid Masters over and done for for another year, we had some really fun finals to talk about and also some massive changes to the rankings as well. Also, the race of the final, of course, another thousand points was up for grabs for the players in the race of the final. Let's go have a look at who won the Madrid Masters. So starting on the ladies' side, it was the number one versus the number two, which Fiontech taking out Sabalenka after saving championship points, 7-5-4-6-7-6, to win her first Madrid Masters. And on the men's side, it was Rublev, who's been playing terrible lately, beating OJ Aliassime in that final, 4-6-7-5-7-5, capping off a great week and putting him back in form. And he did get a boost in the rankings as well. All right, the players that went up in the rankings this week that are outside the top 10, Madison Keys. She went up four spots to number 16 in the world after making the semi-finals of Madrid. OJ Aliassime, he goes up 15 spots back in the top 20 at number 20 after making the final of this tournament and putting Seba. She made the quarterfinals. She goes up nine spots to number 41 in the world after making it that far. So some big boosts there for the players that overperformed at this tournament. Players that went down to the rankings, Kudamatova. She went down six spots to number 25 in the world after losing the points from last year's semi-final. Struff, he went down 17 spots to number 41 after losing all the points from last year's final of this event. And Charich, he goes down 21 spots to number 55 after losing all the points from last year's semifinal as well. So big losses there for those players that didn't perform well and massive boost for the players that did. All right, starting on the WTA side and no major changes at the top, which Fiontech staying at number one and Sabalenka staying at number two for now. But her and Goff are very, very close with Goff at number three. We've got Rabakina at four, Pagula at five. But there was a change in the middle with Zachary dropping down two spots after losing a lot of points from last year's tournament, allowing Von Drusseva to go up to number six and Zhang up to number seven, leaving Zachary there at number eight. So a little bit of change there. Jabir stays at number nine and Ostapenko stays at number 10 for this week. There are a lot of players that are just outside the top 10 that are trying to get in. So Penko better be good over the next couple of weeks, otherwise she might drop out. And heading over to the race of the finals now, no change at the top, which Fiontech extending her lead over Rabakina with that extra thousand points. Rabakina staying at number two with Sablega at three, Collins at four, Goff still at five, and Jung is at number six. There was a little change in the middle with Kostra going down to number eight and Paulini overtaking her to go to number seven after she made the fourth round Paulini of this tournament. Penko stays at number nine, and down the bottom, Kalinskaya drops out of the top 10 completely allowing Kazakina to get back into the top 10 to the race of the finals. And remember, Rome coming up next week, another 1,000 points on the line, so another huge chunk of points to give someone a chance to put their name in that race of the finals. Over on the men's side, and no change at the top with Novak Djokovic staying at one and Yannick Sinner at number two. Alcaraz stays at three, just ahead of Medvedev, who's at number four. Zverev stays at number five. But we do have a change in the middle with Rublev going up two spots to number six, pushing Rude and Tsitsipas down to number seven and eight. So great to see Rublev winning his second Master 1000 title and getting a nice boost in the rankings as well. Her catch stays at number nine and Dimitrov rounds out the top 10. But much like the ladies rankings, Dimitrov has to fight off all the players that are just outside the top 10 because over the next couple of weeks, there could be a change and he might drop out of the top 10 if he's not careful. Over to the race of the finals and still no change at the top with Sinner at number one. Medvedev stays at number two and Rude at number three. Zverev at number four, but Rublev, he flies up back into the top 10, eight spots higher than last week, up to number five after winning in Madrid. With Alcaraz also getting a little bit of a boost, going up to number six, pushing City Bass down two spots to number seven. Dimino also going down two spots to number eight. Dimitrov goes one spot down to number nine. Taylor Fritz, he goes up five spots into that number 10 spot after making the semifinals here in Madrid. And both Hercatch and Djokovic getting kicked out of the top 10 completely when it comes to the race of the finals. So again, so weird at this stage of the season, we're in May now. Djokovic is not in contention for the ATP Finals just yet. But of course, Rome's next week. He wins that. He'll rocket back up the rankings and possibly be in the top four. So only one week and things could change a lot. And of course, with the French Open, there's also that. So I'd be surprised if we don't see Djokovic on this list in the next month. So there it is. That is the rankings for this week. Of course, no rankings next week because Rome is a two-week event. So we'll do the rankings after Rome, just like we've done after Madrid here. But let me know in the comments below. What's the most surprising thing in the rankings for you this week? Maybe it is that Djokovic situation that he's not in contention for the ATP Finals and we're four months down in the season. It's so weird. He hasn't played as much as the other guys because he didn't play Madrid, so that doesn't help. But like I said, he just has to win Rome or you know win the French Open and he'll be back in that top three pretty, pretty quickly. But that's the ranking for this week. A couple of changes there, but Rome next week, we're going to see some massive changes.